Good morning. Glad you guys are all here. If you are a guest today, my name is Trey Kelly. I am the pastor here. And you picked an amazing Sunday to be here if it is your first time because we are starting a brand new series today. And we are going to be discussing everyone's absolute most favorite topic to talk about in church. It's why you're all here. We're going to talk about money. And some of you are like, oh, uh, my car, there's something happening. Look, I understand the topic of money in church. Like, I, I, I know what happens. I, I, I've grown up in church. I've, I've taught about money before. I know that some anxiety can, can well up when we talk about this topic at church. I know some frustration can well up. I know maybe, maybe even some anger, maybe even some, some, some mistrust about this topic. And I, I understand all that. So what I wanted to do right at the top is I wanted to make it very, very clear what we are and what we are not going to talk about in this series. Um, we are going to talk about principles that will enable us to better manage the resources that God's given us, uh, because I think that's something that God wants for us in our lives. What we are not going to talk about in this series is giving. We are not going to talk about generosity. We are not going to talk about anything having to do with me telling you what you should do with your money, except allow God to help you manage it better. Uh, the, only re- the only way you'll hear me say the word giving over the next two weeks is when I tell you we're not going to talk about giving. And the reason uh, we're going to take this approach uh, for the next two weeks is, some of you know this, every May I usually go away uh, for about a week and pray about what God wants us to talk about for the next year, for the next 12 months. And I ask and I listen and, all right, God, where are our people? Where's Myrtle Beach? Like, where's our church? What do we need to talk about over the next 12 months? And typically we do some sort of financial series. And as I was praying specifically about this time, these two weeks, I knew we were going to talk. I knew we were going to talk about finances in some way. I just really felt God kind of give me a clarity that I've never had before about, about the topic. Um, and it, was, it wasn't really anything he revealed about me. It was something he revealed to me about you. Um, and something he revealed to me about people, I believe, that, that attend our church and people that may be watching online or people that just live in Myrtle Beach or really most people, the vast majority of people don't need to be told why they should be generous. Most people understand inherently why generosity is great because generosity is one of those things that's easier caught than taught. I can tell you about being generous, but you know the benefits of generosity the second you are generous with someone. The second you bless someone, the second you give something to make someone's life better, you know the benefit of generosity. It feels great. It feels, it feels amazing. And what, what I think a lot of churches do, us included, is we spend a lot of time talking to people about the why of generosity, which if I was in your shoes, if I was sitting there listening, I would understand why I would get frustrated with money series, because all we talk about is why, why you should give, why you should be generous. If you consider yourself a Christian and you believe in tithing, why you should be obedient to God, why, 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 why? Well, what God sort of revealed to me is people don't need to know why. People understand the why. And so each week we come out and talk about the why. I get why you're like, man, I'm so done hearing why. I know why. It would be like if you had a friend that got in really great shape and they wanted to constantly tell you why you needed to eat better and exercise more. You know, and every time they came over, they were like, here's why you should do this. Here's, here's, here's why you should go gluten-free. Here's why you should cut out sugar. Here's why you should work out six days a week. And you're like, bro, I get the why. I understand it would be better. I need help with the how. How am I going to find time to get up and go to the gym six times a week? How am I going to figure out all this gluten-free stuff? How am I going to say no to pizza? Because pizza is very, very good. With health and fitness, we don't need to know the why. We need to know the how. And see, I think the same is true when it comes to generosity. I think the same is true if you consider yourself a Christian and believe in tithing. I think the same is true when it comes to being obedient with with our finances. I think the last thing any of us need is another why conversation. Which is why we are not going to talk at all about why we should do any of those things. What we're going to talk about this week and next week is how. How in a world filled with bills and mortgages and car payments 
and insurance payments and braces and ER visits and student debt and PTA dues and travel sports equipment. How in the world of all these pressing needs and pressing financial burdens with limited income, how in the world are we supposed to figure out a way to find some extra in that to give away to someone? How in the world are we supposed to do that? See, that's the question I want to talk about for the next two weeks. Because see, what I'm convinced of is when we understand the how, then it's between, it's between us and God with what we do with it. But so what we want to do as a church is we want to help equip you to answer how. How do you learn to manage your money better? How do you get your arms around it? How do you control it? And the answer is in the title of our series. You need a budget. You need a budget, and you need a budget, and I need a budget, and we all need a budget. And my goal over the next two weeks is to answer two very simple questions about why you need a budget. This week, I want to tell you why. Why do you need a budget? Why would a budget make your life better? And then next week, I want to answer how. How do you do it? How do you actually create and maintain a budget that will work for your family? Because I know for some of you, you're saying, man, I've tried this before. I've tried to manage money. I've tried to figure it out. It never works. We never stick to it. I am convinced what we're going to, what we're going to roll out over the next two weeks is going to be so compelling and so helpful and so easy and so practical to use that maybe for the first time ever, you are going to be able to put into, put into place a plan and a budget that can actually work for you and your family. Because here's what we're going to do over the next two weeks. We're going to give you today some principles, some why. Why do you need this? And next week when we turn to how, we are going to introduce a tool, a tool that I use, that many people on our staff uses, that has revolutionized the way we manage our own money. In addition, in, in addition to that tool, we are going to invite you to sign up for eight weeks of coaching emails and encouragement from us as we kind of walk you through the next two months, December and January, really fun budgeting months, by the way, December and January, as, as we walk you through how to begin to actually implement this in your life. And here's what we are convinced that will happen. At the end of this process, you will find you're in control of your money and you have more than you thought. You may even have some extra. And what you do with it is entirely up to you. And the one promise I could make to you this week and next week, you will never hear me tell you what to do with it. And specifically, you will never hear me to tell you to give it to this church. If you've noticed, we have already taken our offering today. We did that before I came up here on purpose. Next week, we are going to take our offering before I speak. We did that on purpose so that there can be no misunderstandings, no wonderings. Hey, why are we doing this? What's happening? We want to make it abundantly 100% clear. These next two weeks are a gift from your church to you. They are a gift to hopefully equip you and prepare you and give you, give you some sort of framework to be able to take control of your finances because that's going to make your life better. And that is what we want and that is what we believe God wants for each and every one of us. Now, I know that there are some people in this room who have a couple of questions. And I, and I fully understand these questions. Question number one is probably, why are we talking about budgeting in church? If I wanted a financial seminar, I would go to a financial planner. That's a very great question. Let me just stipulate right up front, I am not a financial planner. I do not have a final financial background, liberal arts degree from University of South Carolina, all right? So do not take my advice personally on finances. That's not why we are up here. As I said, I'm simply going to share a tool with you. Uh, that I've used is revolutionized the way I do it and, and it's revolutionized our, our, our staff and the way they do it. We're going we're gonna to share that with you. But, but a bigger question, I'm sure some of you are asking, is why are we even talking about this in church? Is budgeting, is financial management, is that really a church topic? And I would say absolutely yes, 100% it is. And the reason I would say that is because I've read the four biographies of Jesus' life. I've studied Jesus uh, probably more than I've ever studied another human over the last 20 years of my life. And if you study Jesus and you study his teachings, one thing is abundantly clear. He thinks the church should talk about money because Jesus was constantly talking about money. And he was very specific in how he talked about money. He was very specific in his expectations of his followers. And one of the things he expected his followers to do was use their money well. 
He expected them to make the most of the resources that his heavenly father had chosen to give them. This was an expectation of Jesus. And we see this in the early church. If you read the the history of the early church, which is the book of Acts, we can see that they worked really hard to use their money well. If you read the training manuals that make up the the, the better part of the New Testament, these letters written by these different men to, to Christians and to churches to give them instructions for what it meant to follow Jesus, it's very evident that, that how we manage our money and how we use our money is, is very important to people um, that, that want to follow God. And if you're, if you're here today, if you don't believe in God, you're sort of experimenting with the things of God. You're checking out the things of God. And so managing our money well is something that really matters. Now, this is nowhere clearer than in a letter from a man named Paul that he wrote to his protege, a man named Timothy. Now, we talk about Paul a lot here at Wellspring because Paul wrote about half of what we call our New Testament. Um, Paul was a church planter. He would start new churches and he would write those churches letters after he had moved on to just to give them instructions and answer questions and to help them understand here's what it means to follow Jesus. Here's how you become a Christian. Here's what it means to apply all these things in your life. Well, most of his letters were to churches. Some of his letters were to people. Um, As I said, he wrote this letter, the two letters we're going to talk about, he wrote two letters to a man named Timothy. Uh, He was his protege, and Timothy was was an aspiring pastor. He was actually leading a church, and we call these two letters the pastoral letters because they're literally Paul coaching Timothy on how to be a pastor, on how to lead a church. So I read these letters all the time because I'm like, hey, I need all the help I could get. And so I read this because I believe when Paul was coaching Timothy through Timothy, he's coaching me, and he's coaching all Uh, men and women who are called to lead God's people. And so, anyway, in this letter, in the first letter he writes to Timothy, he's giving Timothy all these instructions on how to equip the people and how to prepare them and how how to get them ready for life and how to get them ready for what it means to be a Christian and how to handle this situation in life and this situation in life. And near the end of his letter, he turns to finances. And he says, hey, Timothy, it is your job to teach them these things. It is your job to train them in these things. And he talks about the importance of putting our hope in Jesus and not putting our hope in money. And he talks about, you know, the, the value of, of, of using money to do, to do good things. And he, he talks about all these important things. And, 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 and in this letter, Paul tells Timothy one line that has stuck with me for the last, really, six to eight months. And it's this one line that is driving the entire reason we are doing this series and the entire reason we're taking these two weeks to do it in this room and then eight weeks to help coach this content so that we all can learn how to better use the resources God's given us. And here's what Timothy tells, here's what Paul tells Timothy. He says, hey, Timothy, tell them to use their money to do good. Now, he says tell, but another word there could be teach, show, equip, prepare. Because that is the thrust of everything Timothy, I mean, Paul has said in this letter to Timothy. He doesn't say, hey, Timothy, just go preach some sermons. Tell them, how to, tell them why they should do this and move on. He says, no, 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 no. You need to get down in there with them. You need to equip them. You need to prepare them. You need to coach them. You need to teach them how to do this. Teach them. Them's you, by the way. Them is, is anyone interested in the things of God, anyone who, who, is, who is a part of our local church, anyone interested in our local church, anyone interested in, in following God in their lives. Paul tells Timothy, and through Timothy tells me, teach them how to use their money to do good. Equip them, prepare them, give them tools that allows them to be back in control. And allows them to use their money to do the things, God, you want them to do with it. And that is why we're doing this series. And that is why we're talking about this this week and next week. And as I said, I have one simple goal today. To convince you that you need a budget. Because again, some of you are wondering, why? Why do I need a budget? Why should I do this? How does this help me? Why is this important? And here's the answer. Here's why I need a budget. It's because a budget allows us to control our money and keeps our money from controlling us. Now pause. Before we go any further, doesn't that sound better? Doesn't the idea of you being completely and totally in control of your finances sound so much better than whatever it is you're doing right now? If you're like most people, Here's what you're probably doing. Most people ask two simple questions when it comes to spending money. If this is you, you're not alone. You're in perfect company. Everybody does this. This is just the way we do it. Most people, when it comes to spending decisions, 
ask two questions. Here's number one. They say, can I buy this? What does that mean? They look at their bank account. Do I have enough money in my bank account to buy it? Great. They look at their credit card limit. Do I have room on my credit card? Great. Do I have the resources to buy this thing that I want? Question number two that most people ask is this. Should I buy this? And the answer is usually, well, I want it, so yes. Can I buy this? Should I buy this? Now, again, those are, those are fantastic questions. Those are reasonable questions. Those are rational questions. Those are questions that even as we build a budget, those are still going to be the questions you ask. Can I buy this? And should I buy this? Here's the problem that, that I experience, that probably many of you experience when you ask these questions. We don't typically have a plan to answer these questions. We don't typically have a process to answer these questions. We don't you typically have a set of goals we're using to answer these questions. Most people, most of the time, look at those two questions and we wing it. We go with our gut. We say, I got the cash, I want that car, let's go! And we just buy it. And by winging it in the moment, we create for ourselves a lot of problems on the back end. Let me explain. I'm going to assume that you, like me, have plans for the future. You have hopes, you have dreams, you have aspirations. Uh, maybe you hope to one day be able to retire. Maybe you have retired and you hope to be able to make your nest egg last. Maybe you have plans for your children. Maybe you have plans for your grandchildren. Maybe there's a trip you want to take. Maybe you want to be able to pay for your, your children's education. I don't know, but you probably have plans for the future. And whether you realize it or not, those plans are all going to require money. Financial issues are, are really do drive what happens in the future. But for most of us, when it actually comes to spending our money, can I and should I, we answer those questions in a vacuum, completely devoid of any of our future hopes and dreams. So there really is no plan in place. So we don't really have a plan for the future. We have a fantasy for the future. We have a wish for the future. Now, that's fine if you're alone, if it's just you and your house and you control your money, but, but I'm going to assume most people from about half, maybe more in this room, you don't make these decisions on your own. You make these decisions with a partner. You make these decisions with your spouse. You make these decisions with someone else. And guess what? They also have their own hopes and dreams and aspirations for the future. They also have different ways they answer these two questions. You may have one way you say, can I buy this and should I buy this? Your spouse has a completely different answer to the can I, should I questions. This is why the majority of the financial discussions you have in your home aren't fun. This is why the majority of the conversations you have in your home are filled with tension. And they're filled with anxiety. And they sometimes end in conflict. It's because you were both asking can I and should I, but you weren't consulting each other and you weren't consulting the future. Which leads to those really fun moments when one person opens the bank statement or when one person checks the bank account online or when one person looks at the credit card statement and their can I, should I questions are not reflected in the bank account. They're not reflected on the credit card. And so what they do is you go to, to the other person and you say, my love, darling, dear, I would love to ask you a question about your spending. Because that always goes well, doesn't it? Hey, I'm just curious. Why, why did we spend so much money at this place? And the answer from the other person is first is, I don't know. And that's not going to fly. So because we needed it. Okay, why did, we, why did we need it? Well, I needed it. No, the kids needed it. The kids needed it. Okay, well, why did the kids need that much of it? Why do you always question my spending? Because all you do is spend. Some of you are wondering if we have bugged your house. No, we haven't. This is just incredibly common. This is what happens when we don't have a plan for those two questions. And that's the beauty of a budget. A well thought out, listen to me, agreed upon budget 
where every person with spending ability gets to speak into it, and where everyone has agreed on the hopes and dreams, everyone has agreed on the goals, everyone has agreed in advance on the can I, should I questions of life, just lowers the tension in the room. And it lowers the anxiety. And it lowers the pressure. And it gets everyone on the same page about why we're spending and should we spend more. Again, doesn't that sound better than the way we're all just kind of currently swinging at it? Doesn't it sound better to decide in advance, on purpose, as a team, how we're going to answer the can I, should I questions in all areas? That's what a budget does. That's the value of a budget. But there's more. There are several benefits of a budget that I just want to go over with you very quickly. Number one, as I said, it clarifies our spending. When we have a budget that's agreed to, and we all know what we're going to spend, it eliminates the, hey, why did you spend this here? Hey, where did that money go? It eliminates that panic at the end of the month when it's the 26th, and you don't get paid again until the 1st, and you run out of money on the 25th. And you're like, "Uh uh-oh, what are we going to do? And for some reason, we think the best thing to do is to yell at each other about it, because that solves stuff. But it's what we do. But what a budget does is it allows us to clarify that. We don't have to wonder, but not only does it clarify, a budget also helps us prioritize our spending. If it's the 25th and we need some money for the 28th, 29th, and 30th before we get paid on the 1st, guess what we can't do on the 25th? We can't go buy that thing that we want. Can I? Yes, I got the money. Should I? No, because I have priorities that are still coming at the end of the month. And while I would really love that jacket, heat is more valuable. I enjoy heat better. My children need food, and so we will wait. That's the benefit of the budget. It helps clarify our spending. It helps prioritize our spending. And also, it allows us to control our spending. It puts us back in control. So let me ask you a question. And be honest. Do not raise your hand. Do not answer out loud. Who's in control right now? Here's how you know. Do you decide what your money does for you? Or do you seek permission from your money to spend it? Do you decide what you want to do and just do it? Because you know that your money's under your control? Or do you have an idea, think, man, I want to do that, and then you go check the bank account for permission? Well, I really wanted to do this, but Bank of America says no. We'll ask again next month. We'll try to be very nice for the month, and maybe they will like me more. See, a budget that you actually use, and we're going to talk about next week, that you maintain reverses that process. It puts you back in control, which we know is what God wants for you. It's why he spoke through Paul to tell Timothy, hey, teach them how to use their money well. Teach them how to manage their money well. Teach them how to be in control of their money. The answer is a budget. It's not a very spiritual answer, but it's the practical answer. The answer is... A budget that you agree to and that you use and maintain. Imagine, imagine for a moment. Imagine knowing in advance where your dollars are going. Imagine knowing and being able to account for every dollar that has been spent from your household in a month's time. Imagine never again having to have the, why did you spend that? Why do you always question me? Conversation. Imagine being able to sit down and decide in advance and plan 
Well, here are my hopes and dreams. Here are my goals. Here are my priorities. That's where the money is going. Imagine when bills come in. It's not a moment of anxiety. It's not a moment of panic. But imagine feeling prepared for those bills. And imagine just being able to say, yep, I knew that was coming. Here you go. You can get paid. Imagine that. I know it sounds better. And I know it is what God wants for each and every one of us in this room. And it begins with the very practical step of simply acknowledging you are right. I need a budget. I need a framework. I need a system. I need something to help me answer those two questions better than just winging it. Because that's what I'm doing right now. So that's why we think you need a budget. Because a budget allows us to control our money. And it keeps our money from controlling us. Now, I know I said next week is when I was going to tell you how. But I know for some of you, you're going to die if I don't tell you a little bit about how right now. You're like chomping at the bit. So I want to just give you a little preview of what we're going to talk about next week, and then we're going to be done. Uh, next week, I am going to introduce to you, as I said, a tool. Uh, it's, it's a program that you can sign up for and that you can use, and they have an online component. They have, a, they have it. It's on your phone. They have an app for your phone. And it is, for me, I'm not saying it's the only one, but for me, it is the best product out there for creating, maintaining, and actually having a functioning, working budget that, that can actually work in a family where everybody gets to, 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 to have some say in it, and it actually works. And it's called, wait for it, YNAB, which stands for You Need a Budget. That's what it's called. And so what we're going to do next week is I'm going to walk you through some of their basic building blocks, some of the principles of, of budgeting, kind of a budgeting 101. And, and my goal next week is going to be that you are so compelled by what they say and what, so compelled by what they offer that you sign up. We've worked with YNAP, and they have offered our church a 60-day free trial. And so if you sign up with us next week for 60 days, we're then going to uh, email you eight weeks worth of coaching and eight weeks worth of content as you try to put this budget into practice over the next eight weeks. And then after, if, when the 60 days run out, if it didn't work for you, don't, don't sign up. Don't do anything. But if it, if it does, they have a, an annual fee. I don't even know what it is. But what they, they, you know, part of the 60-day thing is they try to help you prepare for that. So, so if you have any interest in that whatsoever... Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about again next week. The, the, the guy who founded the company also wrote a book for those of you who are more visual learners like I am. Maybe you need to read it for yourself. The book is called, very creatively, You Need a Budget. We actually have some copies available for you uh, out in the uh, lobby today and next week if you're interested. Like, you know, you can buy it on Amazon. You can download it from, from Kindle. You can do all that. If you have our app, if you have the Wellspring app right up at the top, you can click on it. It has all the information about where we're going for the next few weeks. And so uh, if you want to find out more about that, you can. Um, I feel compelled to say something because I know some of you are asking. So let me just state it very, very clearly. We have no affiliation with the company YNAB. We get no kickback from YNAB. Um, it's not like if we get 100 people to sign up, we get two free. We have absolutely no deal with them whatsoever. We are selling the book for what we paid for it. Um, we get nothing from them. This is just literally a program that has changed my life. It has changed the way I run my home financially. Uh, it has changed the way my wife and I discuss money, meaning we now discuss it. We don't yell about it. Um, I have decided uh, in my home, um, if my children are going to live in my home and they're going to have jobs, they're going to use YNAP. Now, when they leave, I can't be in control, but they're, but they're going to use it while they live under my roof because right now, to me, it is the best absolutely hands down platform out there for truly creating and maintaining a functioning budget that you can actually use day to day.
And that is, that is 100% the goal, I promise. We get nothing out of this from them. This is just something that I've used. Uh, many people on our staff uh, have begun using, and, and it really works. It really helps. And so for people that I know don't need to be told why they should be generous or why they should help other people or why they should be obedient with their money, you get the why. As your pastor... I feel like it is my job to do everything I can to help equip you with the answer to how. How how do we do it? How do we actually take control of our finances? How do we create and maintain a functioning budget? Well, the answer to how, as always, begins with the why. And the why is that a budget allows us to control our money. And it keeps our money from controlling us. This week, I want you to focus on the why. This week, if you're married, I want you to have conversations and just dream about what life would be like if you were in control of your money. Dream about what life would be like if you agreed in advance on the can I, should I questions. Dream about what life would be like if you didn't have to ask your money for permission to go out to eat. Dream about that and know that it's possible. We talk a lot here about better. We talk a lot about how we know better is possible. When it comes to managing your money, better is possible. And that better begins with a plan. That better begins with a process. That better begins with a budget. Because a budget allows you to control your money and keeps your money from controlling you. So this week, dream about better. Let God confirm in your hearts that better is possible. And then come back next week. Because we're going to talk about how. We're going to talk about the building blocks of a budget. And we're going to walk with you for eight weeks. As you discover, not only is better possible, better is promised. And with God's help, you can create and maintain a budget. You can regain control of the resources he's given you. And once that happens, you are free to do with it whatever you want. Let me pray. God, we just love you so much. We are so thankful for your son. We're so thankful for the magnitude of what he did, that he came to save us. We're so thankful that he comforts us in our fears. We're so thankful that he provides clarity and uncertainty. And we're so thankful for his practicality. We are so thankful that something as fundamental to our lives as money management is something that concerns our Savior. And we're so thankful that, that we know from him he wants better for us in that. He wants us to be back in control. So, Father, I just pray today that you just draw our hearts to you, open our hearts, and and confirm to us that better is possible in our finances, and that better will come in a budget. God, this week, just, just give us opportunities to have conversations and to dream about what could be. Next week, Father, I pray as we talk about the how, how to build this budget, that you bring us back, give us the courage and wisdom to take steps so that we all, we all may be in a position that you want us to be in, fully equipped and prepared to use our money, to use your money, to do good. We love you. It's in your son's amazing holy name we pray. Amen.